Welcome to Double Standards with me, Afshin Ratansi. There's only one global story that affects hegemonic power, east, west, south and north, and that's Gaza. Coming up in the show, we ask whether President Obama is out of his depth on Palestine. Lester Square asks the people of Britain about what they think of Al-Qaeda's Nobel Peace Prize for actions in Syria and Libya. And as the US-backed assault on Gaza continues, we speak to journalist and activist Kevin Ovenden. So CNN and the paedophile organization BBC may be reporting lies from Gaza every day on their news channels, but some brave reporters are leaving mainstream media. Here's CNN's Anderson Cooper, heir to the American Vanderbilt fortune, throwing away his CNN uniform for a press TV flak jacket. We'll have to wait and see whether he's able to report fairly from Palestine. Many Gazans, however, look like they still aren't happy with this coverage. Centers uh, built... Whoa. Things are getting from bad to worse in Afghanistan for UK troops. So bad, they've resorted to drafting in James Bond to help them out. I think he was advertising sunglasses, but it all went horribly wrong. Bond began drinking with the soldiers, then turned a gun on them with the usual resulting friendly fire fatalities. Soon after, former CIA drone killer David Petraeus was smuggled into Congress to testify about events that led to the killing of US Ambassador Chris Stevens in Libya, President Obama demanded to look at a diagram of Petraeus's love life. It now seems that all of US and ISAF counter-terror policy in Afghanistan was based on complex relations between different Petraeus lovers. Petraeus isn't the only one in trouble over affairs in Washington. Rumors abounded about President Obama's affairs, not helped by his trip to Myanmar. Not sure what Michelle Obama would have thought about this at all. Not sure what Aung San Suu Kyi thought about Obama's reference to the Rohingya, though. Kuwait has just received new shipments of British tear gas. A demonstration in favor of greater electoral freedom. We are asking the prince to allow voting for more than one candidate. Despite their apparently peaceful demands, the police eventually resorted to tear gas to subdue the protesters. But never fear, Kuwait's royal family negotiated with the demonstrators and put on a firework display in their honor. It subsequently turned out that what was fired into the sky was actually the demonstrators themselves. At least the Guinness Book of Records said it was the largest firework display ever. Back in Britain, after hearing the UK government was to introduce a new land and property tax, this garden in Cumbria sunk into the ground, disappearing to the European tax haven of Monaco. Fear that the entire British Isles will completely disappear forced the government to U-turn once again, although Prime Minister David Cameron's family will advise you on offshore tax havens for free. Many people around the world have been appalled by the Western mainstream corporate media coverage of the Gaza conflict. So away from the BBC, Fox News and CNN, let's take a look at pro-Obama network MSNBC. Here's their take on what is happening, courtesy of Politicoid. In the heart of the Middle Eastern desert, the lone democracy continues its epic struggle to survive. The nation of Israel is surrounded by ferocious foes intent on their deadly destruction. In Egypt, the Muslim Brotherhood is poised to shatter decades of peace and calling for the annihilation of the nation of Israel. In Lebanon, Hezbollah, bolstered by their dastardly accomplice Iran, purvey death and destruction towards the nation of Israel. In the West Bank, Hamas hatches malevolent schemes to create a world where the nation of Israel does not even exist. To whom can they turn for deliverance? The bright, shining light the one who by words alone can calm the turbulent waters upon the sea of change. The borders of Israel and Palestine should be based on the 1967 lines. Yeah. He has no idea what the world is like. One man who's enjoying his stay in Israel and his numerous chances to appear on TV is my next guest. Joining me now is international war criminal and current Middle East war envoy Tony Blair, who's just finished having dinner in a Tel Aviv hotel. Tony, what have you most enjoyed since your arrival amidst the Gaza crisis? Innocent people being killed. People there are suffering. Don't you want peace? There's got to be a way of stopping that. Apart from the innocent men, women and children, who are you currently advising the Israelis to kill? 
met the Palestinian leadership, um, President Abbas and Prime Minister Fayyad. What don't you want the people of Gaza to have? To live a normal life. And you want to destroy? The Palestinian economy. You don't work for the British government anymore, but I believe UK Prime Minister David Cameron didn't have much success selling arms on his recent trip there. Rumour has it that you're actually out there to sell accessories for Iron Dome on behalf of the British to Israel. The, the British government, look, I'm not a representative of the British government in this particular instance, but I don't think that's accurate. You're going to sell more nuclear weapons to Israel? Is Britain going to? Actually, the British government has got its own line on what should happen, both in respect of the overall peace process and indeed in respect of Gaza. Your personal economic affairs are doing very well. How much are you paid per hour? Almost 40,000. By the way, if there's been anything that's succeeded over the last few years, it's that. Now, that's primarily been as a result of the um, actions of the Palestinian president and prime minister. But the fact is, you know, that is actually something that has gone better than the politics, which I agree has been paralyzed. You still aren't at your target of a billion dollars in your personal bank account. Do you think your personal and political corruption will ever get you there? Um, after decades of, of not getting there, the fact is you've just got to keep trying and you've got to keep working it. So if I gave you a billion dollars now... That, that's the only way right. you're going to get a Palestinian state. What happens if you don't get the money soon? There are a lot of people who are going to get hurt. What do people shout out at you in the street apart from war criminal? You know, you haven't brought peace to the Middle East yet, so, you know, you failed as it were. And what do you want most to destroy? Proper infrastructure, water, electricity, peace, stability and democracy for the, to the whole of the region. Nothing's changed with you, Tony. Weapon of mass destruction. Thank you, war criminal. Qatar. Hi, Mr. Amir. I know you're in the UK Sunday Times over the World Cup Football 22 scandal. A million dollars for a gala dinner. Why don't you give more money to Gaza? Oh, you just did. In which case, what happened to all the money? Looks like war criminal Netanyahu's come out to supervise killing himself here in Gaza or wherever we are, Palestine. So, what are you on about? Why are you killing children with chemical weapons, you monster? Yeah, no answer to that one. And these useless soldiers, every one of them, Israeli soldiers, all of them useless? So you decided to come out here and run the killing yourself? He never did answer any of the questions, so I'm going to ring him. He's too far away over there. Star Starbucks? I've got the wrong number, hang on a second. Netanyahu. One-way ticket to Holland, please. You booking a flight to The Hague? Anything you say will be taken in evidence by the International Criminal Court, you know. Sort him out, I'll answer to no one. Sort what out? So you are going to sort me out with an interview? Looks like the war criminal is going to sort me out with an interview. There he is, over there. Who's over where? Oh, here. Yeah, I'm over here. Fire. Yeah, I'm over here. What's that? Well, at least I'm not as wounded as some of the people in Gaza. Oh, look, the Israelis are such great humanitarians. They're dropping leaflets. I wonder what they're telling me to do. Oh, yeah. All Muslims need to be killed. 25% off turkeys at Marks and Spencer. The British Daily Mail newspaper has been reporting that the Special Air Service, or SAS, is now under investigation after claims that its soldiers tortured Iraqi policemen during a top-secret mission. The SAS allegedly tortured the Iraqis after six British Royal Military policemen were killed in the Iraqi town of Majar al-Kabir in 2003. Did the SAS take revenge on the Iraqis for the lives of these six British military policemen? Within a year of the police deaths, the UK Guardian newspaper reported that UK troops were being accused of mutilating Iraqi bodies. In fact, it was UK military police that got to investigate claims that British soldiers mutilated the bodies of Iraqi insurgents after a firefight near the very same southern Iraqi town of Majar al-Kabir. All very mysterious. We'll let you know what happens in that investigation into the SAS, but Britain never did get the oil contracts around Majar al-Kabir. The Turks did, and now the Iraqi government have kicked the Turks out. In fact, this very week, China and Russia look set to purchase ExxonMobil's $50 billion Iraqi oil stake. Joining me now, though, is comedian David Mulholland to go through some of the cartoons from around the world. David, how's it going, and why are there all these sirens going on all around you? Uh, well, there was a student protest in London today. 
uh, because students are upset that they're being uh, getting forced paid to pay too much money. money. Yeah, well, no, they're, they're being forced to pay too much money. Apathetic, useless people. What's your first cartoon? Well, they're, they're demonstrating they're not apathetic. Don't be silly. The first cartoon. It's no, please been, it's please been, keep hurting yeah, them. Yeah, it, it's been actually, well, it's a good right backdrop for what's been going students. on in the world. Uh, the first cartoon, it's about Israel and uh, the uh, military operation with Gaza, Go which is it. ongoing. And here you have uh, Netanyahu climbing up in the polls of popularity on uh, the bodies of dead babies. And in fact, 84% uh, of Israelis approve of the operation in Gaza, although most of them oppose the idea of going in on the ground. And uh, there's an election coming up in Israel. Net Netanyahu uh, is coming up for election. It's 22nd of January. And since the beginning of the operation in Gaza, his popularity has gone up 20%. So it's, you know, shooting people is working. God, I can't believe you can. You can actually find comedy in all of that. No, I'm uh, I, I find happy. It, well, it's what always happens in war. That's what always it's happens. It's Teacher's Day in Turkey. Did you know that? Erdogan finally came no, out with No, they haven't effectively words. taught me on that. All right, very good. Happy with uh, Obama continuing to supply weapons and uh, F-16s and all sorts of military technologies to kill innocent uh, men, women and, women and children? Happy? In which country? Palestine. Turkey, Palestine. In this one, it's on sort of the same thing, same subject. And here you have uh, an Israeli soldier saying, he started it. And here you have a Palestinian saying, no, he did. And here you have a woman wandering through the rubble saying, I don't think they'll ever stop. Why are you yeah. saying Palestinians are shorter than Zionist No, uh, no, that, that's near criminals. and far, near and far. That he's near, that's far and farther away. It's, it's depth, depth of field. Not, not bigger. Uh, although, in the sense of military capability, yeah, Israel is, is quite a bit bigger. Big money in drones, um, take us through it. Here you, have, uh, here you have a general reading the newspaper saying, Petraeus scandal, sex, lies, emails, lots of emails, saying, oh no, this makes the military look unethical. Quite and good, of course, where well, you've got the, all these things, you know, with, with drone warfare, where you're basically getting a surveillance camera footage and you're killing things, uh, which has people, got real. Not things, killing people. Children. On to the next cartoon. It's about uh, Obama went to Myanmar or Burma. It's called both. Uh, but uh, went to Myanmar. It was a historic trip. Uh, and here you have in the cartoon, you have uh, the Chinese trying to climb up uh, uh, the, the head of Myanmar who are upset because Tain Obama's Sain, already got there. Is his hmm? name. Tain Sain, is that his name? Yeah. Uh, the killer of the Rohingya Muslims. Mad Buddhist extremist man. The Myanmar government has not been known for being nice. Right. Buddhists, though. What yeah. is wrong with Buddhists? Why do they like to kill Muslims so much and wipe Can out entire villages? Can you name me any group in the history of mankind that doesn't want to kill people that hasn't gone around being horrible to their neighbors and their domestic population? Great. On that note, I should tell you that Joan of Arc unsuccessfully besieged La Charité in 1429 on this day. You, they, so what? There is a lot of things that people did in history that they failed to do. Who else has tried to siege a town on this day? Twelve-year-old girls today don't do things like that. They seem to be watching corporate ideas she was of Xbox. 19 at the time. She was 19. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, anyway, uh, you're back next week, and we're going to talk more about this terrible conflict in Gaza. We're going <laughs> to stop your Manichaean view immediately. Thank you very much. You're off to South End on Sea. Go back to... No, I'm off to Leicester Square this week. Essex, Leicester Square. Leicester Square's on in a bit. Bye. Yeah. While corporate mainstream media grotesquely distort what's happening in the U.S.-backed war on Gaza, Double Standards wants to get you some real analysis. With me is Kevin Ovenden, a journalist and activist. Kevin, welcome back Thank to you. the show. Gaza, what's been your reading over the past uh, few days? I think we've seen from Benjamin Netanyahu an attempt to lash out, uh, killing over 100 Palestinians at the caged Palestinians in Gaza is some kind of demonstration effect, a demonstration effect before the Israeli election, demonstration effect to Barack Obama, that Israel's not in the mood to any, uh, for any kind of compromise, uh, to Arab capitals and uh, to the Palestinians as a whole uh, in advance of Abu Mazen, and the Palestinian president's move again at the United Nations, this time at the General Assembly. Uh, planned move later this month to move for Palestinian recognition of a Palestinian state. So we're seeing a brutal, murderous, politically motivated uh, move by the most right-wing government in Israeli history. Did the British government's response surprise you or did it confirm suspicions you had anyway? 
It didn't surprise me, but as I say to many friends, the moment that we become inured to the double standards, the hypocrisy of the British government with regard to the Middle East is the moment that we cease to have any anger and cease to have any human feeling. And I have to say that by in the very crowded field of despicable responses by British Home Secretaries over the decades. And foreign we, secretaries. And, and foreign yeah, secretaries yeah. indeed. Uh, William Hague uh, came through uh, the front as a winner by saying that the principal responsibility for the murderous attack that's taking place on Gaza lies with Hamas and the people who elected Hamas in Gaza. Uh, in fairness, the opposition Ed Miliband's first question at Prime Minister's Questions was uh, about the bus bomb in Tel Aviv. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the names of the people who've been uh, injured in Tel Aviv will be known to all of the British media, which is stationed in Tel Aviv and in Jerusalem. They'll be printed in and in Gaza, papers, though, and in Gaza to some when they're not being bombed. Oh, exactly. The only the only the only time that you have mainstream corporate uh, journalists travelling to Gaza is at the moment that it's being bombed and the editorial line has already been set. You don't get daily coverage from Gaza, you don't have the daily life of people in Gaza who've been living under siege for, for six years. So uh, did it surprise you regarding Obama because, uh, um, I mean, some people have even said the Occupy Wall Street people uh -huh. came out with a statement which was reasonably equivocal, let alone President Obama. Do you think uh, people are beginning to understand his policies more clearly when it comes to the Middle East? I think that they are. President Obama was elected with a, a coalition of uh, support from people in the United States who stand four square against uh, the base of his opponent. Yet the policy that he has on the Middle East is almost identical with the base of the Republican Party with the opponent who he uh, defeated earlier this month. And it's a policy which is wrapped up in talk of democracy, wrapped up certainly in, with talk of change in the places where they want to have change which suits them, i.e. Syria, but not Saudi Arabia, but remains completely joined to the Israeli war machine. The only uh, caveat that Obama and for that matter the British government put on the Israeli attack was to, to, to warn or to advise Tel Aviv that uh, it would lose international support if it launched a ground invasion. But all that that's about is demarcating the parameters within which the murderous aggression can take place and signalling to Israel, do it, do it quickly, kill a lot, destroy a lot, but please stop before things get out of hand in the Middle East. Of course, one thing that the mainstream media have been going on about is uh, even in Mohamed Morsi's election, they didn't like that one bit. Uh, how, f how well do you think uh, the new Muslim Brotherhood government in Cairo can be regarded? President Morsi withdrew the Egyptian ambassador to Tel Aviv. Now in Britain, this uh, would be a major step. Uh, the British government has no intention of doing anything like that and never has done. But the yardstick in Egypt is different from the yardstick in Britain. Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood are in power thanks to revolutionary developments taking place in Egypt over the course of the last nearly two years. So the yardstick's different. What could be lionised in Britain is lamentable, I'm afraid, in Cairo and in Egypt. Because the same President Morsi is basking in warm praise from, the, uh, from Washington and London for his mediation efforts uh, between Israel and Hamas. And the border between Egypt and Gaza, Rafa continues to have restrictions placed upon it. Tunnels continue to be How blocked. does he manage to run a Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt whilst doing these things then? Not opening the well, border? Well, the argument, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's an argument which should be taken seriously, from him and from the, the established leadership of the Muslim Brotherhood, is give us time. We need to move cautiously. The staff military is still in place. Uh, Israel and the uh, West continue to have interests inside of Egypt. We've had to go to the IMF to secure a loan, which came through this week. So give us time. We don't want to move too quickly. So the loan from the IMF came this week? The loan from the IMF. Of, of it's Ram good timing, isn't yeah, it? it? Pillar indeed. of cloud and uh, money from the IMF. It is, it is indeed. So, so, so the, the argument is, let's move cautiously. The problem with that is that no one is saying that Egypt should move recklessly and endanger uh, the Egyptian people uh, provoke 
a wider war. But if it's not going to move to rescind the Camp David Agreement, which is the shame of the previous Egyptian regime, now, when the biggest attack on Gaza since the attack four years ago under Mubarak is taking place, then when? If not now, when? So I think that us, with all of the Arab leaders, so with Turkey, no Arab or Muslim leader will say anything other than the fact that they are with their Palestinian brothers until Jerusalem. The words are easy. Kevin Ovenden, thank you very much for coming on Double Standards. I know loads of demonstrations here in London okay. and uh, around the Britain, around Britain organised. Thank you. Now it's time for People of Britain. Let's go to our roaming reporter. It's time for our special section, People of Britain. Over to you, Leicester Square, in what has been a terrible week for the world. Hello, Afshin. Leicester Square here. It's People of Britain time. It's terrible that many people are not watching the grim news coming out of Gaza at all. In fact, they're watching a programme called X Factor, where people eat the tusks and necks and different parts of bodies of giraffes, and they're sold on then to this shop, Starbucks, where Press TV is not available on Wi-Fi. Anyway, people of Britain time. <laughs> Hi there. David Beckham is joining a Chinese football team. Is it time to rename the England football team China? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. No. Because it would be difficult to figure out who's winning? Uh, well, that, that and um, uh, the, the, the British, uh, the UK players, uh, that's not right. David Beckham has joined a Chinese football team. Is it time to rename the England football team China? No. Just get rid of Beckham, that's fine. Frank Lampard's going as well. He's fine, he's done his day, he's gone, he's finished. David Beckham is uh, going to join a Chinese football team. Okay. Is it time to rename England, the football team, China? Yeah, absolutely right. I wish you'd do that. But what happens if China play China then? How would you know which one's England? Uh, um, David Beckham? He will do his eyes like that, and they will know he's David Beckham, isn't That's it? That's probably racist, but yeah. No, no, man, it's all right, man. I've seen Chinese people with big eyes. No. A uh, crocodile has eaten a British MP. Do you think it's time to stop the ITV programme, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here? No. We still want it, want to watch it. Even though a crocodile has eaten an elected member of Parliament? It's a pity. Um, you have, they have to continue. How many more MPs have to be eaten by animals for you to say no, no more? No. None of them will be eaten by animals anymore. Crocodile has eaten a British MP. Do you think it's time to stop uh, I'm a Celebrity? Yeah, um, definitely. Definitely. I think we've all had enough of it. No, I think they should send more MPs over there to be eaten by crocodiles. But how many elected representatives need to be eaten by wild animals for you to stop an ITV series? Um, I would say about 595, to be honest. How many, do you think that means that they should stop the programme? The programme should carry on. Even though she's been eaten by a crocodile? She's been eaten by the crocodile. In the past half hour, I got the news. She's alive. How many more MPs need to be eaten by crocodiles before you say it should be stopped? <laughs> Al-Qaeda have uh, been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for their work in Syria. A good or a bad decision? Bad decision. <laughs> Al-Qaeda have won the Nobel Peace Prize for their work in Syria. A good or a bad choice? Bad choice. Uh, Al-Qaeda have won the Nobel Peace Prize for their work in Syria. A bad choice or a good choice? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Too taxing. I've had a bad day. Uh, is that a good decision by the Nobel Committee? On that one, I'd have to say no. David Beckham has joined a Chinese football team. Do you think they should rename? I know. I'm just I'm asking everyone. There you have it, Afshin, the voices of the people of Britain. As you can see just behind me, there's a, some kind of shop there, Marks and Spencer. Apparently people are accusing it of giving money to people that uh, aid the Israeli regime, whatever that is. I'm going to go in there and let some tear gas off. I'll see you next week. Thanks, Lester. See you next week. You can email us at comment at See you next week.